Hello and welcome to another Murders at Karlov Manor draft. We hit Mythic on the last episode. And now it is time for us to make it beyond Mythic. To make it to rank one. Draft is ready. Let's get there. Sweet rare, maybe? <sighs> That's a sweet rare. I, I will accept this rare. I have not been able to play with it, but I've been extremely jealous every time my opponents have played it. Ezrim Agency Chief. One white, white, blue, blue for a 5 5 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, investigate twice. One second artifact that gains vigilance, uh, lifelink, or hexproof until end of turn. Let's slam Ezrim. Fourth best rare of the set, apparently. Uh, Reckless Detective, Killer Among Us are also premium on commons. They're both very good. Uh, Cold Case Cracker is probably the best option as, at common, but we're taking the, the Ezra. You, you know what's funny? I was like, look, I've been doing drafting a lot of blue-white detectives, so I want to try to do something else. And then I just have to go ahead and open Ezra Agency Chief. I, I mean, what, what, what can I do? I mean, I can take it and not play blue-white, but that'd be kind of wild, right? Anyways, let's move on to this pack. Um, rare was taken. How lucky. Uh, looking at the uncommons, we have Sumala Sentry, which is a great, great build around uncommon if you want to be green-white. Um, Meddling Youth is, is just okay. I mean, it's a nice big beater for five mana. Looking at the commons, we have Shock and Granite Witness and I guess to some degree Crowd Control Warden as options. So the question here is, do I want to take the upside pick in the Sumala Sentry in green-white, or do I take Granite Witness? And given the first pick, Ezrim, unless green-white is super-duper open, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and take Granite Witness because I think it's just going to be a very fine card in a blue-white deck. Moving on, we have Case of the Gateway Express. Great, great uncommon. I absolutely love this card. Typically, I would take two drops over anything, as I've said before. Season Consultant would be an excellent option. Tunnel Tipster is also a card that I'm a big fan of. Um, Homicide Investigator is a fantastic two drop. And I'm a little bit surprised to see this third pick. An uncommon and... I mean, at this point, who knows what, how many rares and uncommons can be in a pack. So I, I think that's not even a good gauge anymore. But at least an uncommon was taken. Maybe another rare. Homicide Investigator is great, but I don't even know if it's better than Case of the Gateway Express. And of course, we are at least going to try to be blue and white. Moving on, we have a pack with Drag the Canal, Harry Dronesmith, uh, Get a Leg Up, which is a decent combat trick, especially in a green-white aggressive deck. There's also Bite Down on Crime, which is pretty good. And then there's a Museum Night Watch. So a lot of different options here. I kind of want to, I feel like I just kind of want to lock into blue-white if possible and just take the good white cards. Can't really go wrong with that anyways. So I'm just going to take Museum Nightwatch out of this pack. Drag the Canal can be okay. There's some good green cards. If we took the Sumala Sentry second pick, I can certainly see the case being made for taking one of these cards. But Museum Nightwatch is just a solid card to play in any deck. So I'm going to play it. Um, you could also consider taking the land there because we have a double blue, double white card in our deck. And obviously, this is not the most trivial thing to cast. But... Oftentimes, when you look at Ezrim, you kind of want to treat it as kind of a, a six drop anyways, because you want to cast it and have the ability to at least play, pay one mana to sack an artifact to give it hexproof, just so it doesn't die to removal. Here, I'm going to take an Auspicious Arrival. There is a Gadget Technician, which is quite decent if you're blue-red. Sanitation Automaton is an okay two mana creature. I don't hate playing this card as a filler card. I will play it if I only end up with like four two drops, but I do think Auspicious Arrival is a very, very good combat trick that I want to play. So happy with that, but we do have to be mindful of our curve as always. And Public Thoroughfare, I absolutely hate. I, I think this land is horrible and you should avoid playing this card if possible. Taking a turn off to, do, to use this ability on turn two is so punishing in this format. There is a late tunnel tipster, but I think I'm just going to take a bubble smuggler just to have a two mana creature in my deck. Um, yeah, this is simply just a, hey, I need to make sure I hit my two mana quota. 
Moving on to this pack, we have Case File Auditor, which is nice way to which is a nice way to get Case of the Gateway Express. Another auspicious arrival is okay, but I'm gonna take Season Consultant here. And take another Season Consultant here over Dramatic Accusation. All right, hopefully we don't have to play this Bubble Smuggler. And then I'm gonna take Sanitation Automaton. I'm not a big fan of Thinking Cap, and Sanitation Automaton I do prefer over the Bubble Smuggler. It's very, very rare that you get to flip over the Bubble Smuggler for value. So I would rather just have the two mana card that smooths out my draw. I mean, ideally, I don't have to play either. And I have enough Season Consultants and Market Night Watch creature and Perimeter Enforcer cards, cards of that elk. But if, you, if we can't get it, then we can go ahead and play the Automaton. We also got a couple of Griffnot trackers. This I really don't like as well because of anything that costs more than three mana that has two toughness, I mean, it's only meant for offense. It is an okay evasive card, but it does die to shock. And um, I'll look to play this if, one, I need filler, and two, I have lots of detective synergies. So if I have lots of detective payoffs, then I'll be looking to play the tracker, but otherwise I really try not to play it in my decks. Moving on to pack number two, we have Kylox, lots of words. I don't think it's good though. It costs seven mana. Also, it's not blue or white. Blue does seem pretty cut off, but you're not going to stop me from playing Ezrum. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to find a way. I, I, li I love taking all the white cards anyways. I'm going to take Market Watch Phantom out of this pack. Push pull is interesting if I was white black because pull is a great way to finish off games. Um, the effect of pull is stronger in this format because of the existence of all the morphs. You, let's say you just morph a couple of Rift Burst Hellions, right? And then all of a sudden you cast pull and you have two six sevens in haste getting in there. So that's what makes the card uh, a little bit better in this format relative to others. But we are super happy just taking Market Watch. And now that's an Aurelia the Law Above. Huh. Well, um, Aurelia's, okay, how good is Aurelia the Law Above? I mean, blue wasn't that open. Flying Vigilance Haste, ETB, when, you, when a player attacks a three more creature, you draw a card. Okay, I gotta take this card. I mean, now I don't know if I'm gonna be splashing or if I'm blue-white or red-white. We'll see where it goes, but I just feel like it's so far above the bar for what should be a reasonable creature. Five mana, five, five, flying vigilance haste? Player attacks with three or more creatures you draw. Okay. I mean, come on. Come on. Okay. So, uh, I'll take a dog walker now out of this pack. It's fine if I'm going to be super heavy white anyways. And if I'm red white, it's going to be phenomenal. So, we might have to make a little, uh, little swap here. We'll see. We have basically no other blue cards other than the Ezrim, so it is possible, and we'll just kind of let the packs dictate what our second color is going to be. Here, we're super happy with an inside source. I do really like Loxodon Eavesdropper in general, but I just... Number one, inside source is better. Number two, we're not green. We're either red-white or blue-white. Now we have... Okay, so now we have to make a decision here between a red card or a blue card. Do we want to take Cold Keys Cracker? Or a person of interest. I think I want to be a pretty heavy red, uh, uh, white deck. So I don't know I want to play, if I want to play Case of the Burning Mask. So I'm going to just take person of interest here. Red, white's looking to go white anyways. And now there's a reckless detective. Okay. Well, I mean, at least in this pack, red is open. In the first, I mean, blue or red cards weren't seen in the first pack. So probably the person passing to us was likely blue, red. Something along those lines, but Reckless Detective is a premium two-mana creature. Very happy to pick that up. And yeah, I guess we're going to want to be red-white here. Here we have Felonious Charge or Sanitation Automaton. One, two, three, four, five. I'll take a Felonious Charge at this point. I think we have enough twos. Or we have a good number of twos and we're kind of lacking in tricks at the moment. So we'll take that. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, six two mana cards. So just having a one mana trick to fight through what your opponents might do could be interest could be useful. Now we'll take Offender at Large. There is a Crime Stopper Sprite. 
but it does feel like red might be a little bit more open. Sorry, Ezra. And if I'm if I'm not if I'm not blue white, I don't really like the the granite witness either. So hopefully we don't have to play those. All the season consultants, I'll take them. Now, Dog Walker is more often than not going to be a three mana card, but it is nice to be able to have the option of playing this turn two if you really need. Yeah, and Person of Interest does seem to have a 2% higher win rate than the case of the burning removal spell, which is really interesting, right? You look at this, you're like, oh, it's just a common, but it's a, it, it's a creature that makes a body, which is great. And going wide is just something that you really want to do in this format, so. All right, well, this is nice because we cut a bunch of these blue cards and we still have enough playable cards, right? I mean, we don't have to necessarily play all of these offenders at large, but we have a decent curve. We have a couple of tricks. And remember, removal is not what it used to be, especially in this format. So I don't even prioritize removal that highly. And when I stopped prioritizing removal, I've, I've started having a lot more success in this format. But I'm still taking a Lightning Helix. <laughs> there are certain... There are certain... I mean, this is such a premium removal spell. Gaining life is so important in racing situations. I mean, that's what we're going to take. If we didn't take the Lightning Helix, probably take maybe the Concealed Weapon. But I guess we didn't end up blue-white. Looks like we're firmly going to end up into a red-white deck. We're going to take another Market Watch Phantom out of this pack. Crime Novelist is cool in a blue-red um, blue Investigate deck. Case of the Ransack Lab is not really a card you... I don't think the, a blue red spells deck exists really. Out cold is decent if you're the blue tempo deck. But if, even if we were blue white, we would have taken Market Watch Phantom. And now it's between Shock and Market Watch Phantom. We, okay, so in most instances, I would have taken the Market Watch Phantom, but we have one, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven twos. So I think we can use Shock in this deck. I think in a lot of instances, I would take the Market Watch Phantom over the Shock. But here, I think the Shock is, is quite good. Oh, I do love me a Watchdog, but is it better than Person of Interest? Hmm. I don't know that it, I don't know that it is. I'm just going to take Person of Interest. I think this is kind of... The, the rate that you get for this card is just too, too strong. Yeah, let's take Person of Interest. It's also going wide with... The thing is, we don't have... Um, the plus two plus one uh, spell, the go white spell, but we do have Aurelia, and Aurelia wants you to have a lot of creatures in play. Take a Gearbane Orangutan, although I'm not sure if I'm going to play this. Probably not. Take another Season Consultant. This is a lot of Season Consultants, more than I'm used to playing. Uh, is Demand Answer something I want? Or do I just take Lumber? I'll just take Lumbering Line. All right, so this pack is certainly a lot worse than the other packs. That's a late cold case cracker. And it's probably because the person passing to us isn't red. <laughs> but I think we still ended up with a solid deck. And we have a decent curve with Aurelia at the top end. So I think we'll still be okay. We're probably going to have to play... Maybe a Griff Knot Tracker or something, just, um, just to make everything work. But this is still looking pretty decent for us. Let me move the spells off to the side. So look, seven two drops, good number threes, potentially eight two drops if you count the Dog Walker. This is a face down card. And then we have Felonious Rage. So even these, uh, even the Rage and the Shock that we took ended up being pretty good for us, just because this does still give us about five tricks that we can play. And then everything else is a creature. Um, Goblin Mask Maker. We have. I don't know. I want to. I'm not a big fan of that card in general, but we have what? Uh, we only have five face down cards, so I don't know if it's good enough to play in a deck with just five face down cards. But yeah, I mean, look, we just chose one rare over the other. Not that clear that either of those colors was open. We definitely got hooked up in the second pack. 
a little bit, but I still think we ended up with uh, a decent deck. And hey, look, at least you can say that I'm not blue-white this time, even though it might have actually been correct to be blue-white. Uh, but we'll, we'll see how this goes. Okay. I really wish I did have the one copy of On the Job. This deck would have really loved that card. What do we want here? Okay, so we're going to be pretty heavy white. So nine planes, eight mountains. I suppose we can play maybe one tracker and then either a two drop or a face down card. It's either Granite Witness. I don't think I want to play the Mask Maker. I think it's either the Granite Witness or Sanitation Automaton. Four, five, six. We have seven twos? Hmm. Okay, let's just not play the tracker. We already have three fours. Oh, no, this is a... Let's just keep our curve low. We have a Sanitation Automaton just to give us ourselves another two. I think we just want a bunch of cheap creatures with Quad Season Consultant, right? We just want to go wide. And then let's just go ahead and play um, the Granite Witness. Like I said before, I'm not a big fan of doing this. Uh, we will have more planes than mountains. And I think I just want to have a potentially evasive creature that I can play on turn three over the 3-2 flyer. I mean, it's not like I'm playing, choosing to play this over something particularly strong. If I had another decent two drop, I probably would have played it. But hey, there are just going to be instances where I can flip this up sometimes and uh, give me an evasive creature, but something I can play on turn three just to make sure this works. So this is a deck here. Eight twos, eight threes, a couple, couple, of, couple of twos here in Aurelia and a smattering of tricks and whatnot. Seems solid. I would guess that this is... I'm just going to guess... This is a four-win deck, but uh, let's see if we can beat that prediction. All right, we are 259. Got to start building. All right, we've drawn all of our... Well, it's just a handful of commons. Turn two, season consultant. Turn three, offender at large. Turn four, person of interest. Curb out. And we are playing against another red-white deck. It's okay. We have the two drop. We're on the draw, but we had the two drop to match theirs. If they attack, easy enough block. Oh my gosh, this is just the quickest. I mean, they could have felonious charge. Yeah, but then they need to have a follow up too, and they do. <laughs> That's okay. It's fine. It's all good. I mean, they use the felonious charge to kill season consultant. It you know it was okay. Let's block the tracker this time. They have an innocent bystander, three cards in hand, and it's a person of interest. Yep. It's a uh, classic Boros things. We are going to do the same thing here, but they were on the play. Makeshift binding on token. Okay, they're getting super aggressive. They get to get in for six. I can't block because my other creature has menace. Um, but now I'm going to play... A face down card and also a season consultant. Attack with the menace creature. Just kind of uses our mana the best. All right, let's block here. Okay. Wow. I don't know about that attack. Um, <laughs> okay. Well. Let's go ahead and attack with our team. We have two extra creatures we can play this turn. So let's go Sanitation Automaton. Let's keep that on top. Person of Interest. We almost have a lethal attack here, I feel. Two. Okay. It looks like they got flooded out. Man, they, they, they played like they had somewhere to go. They were just like... <laughs> jam, jam, jam. Attacking their 2-1 into my 1-3 was probably not ideal. Okay. We've moved up the ranks. 215. Road to rank 1. Going strong.
Okay. Um, I'll keep. This one is a little bit interesting because we don't have any white sources and all white cards, but I have Sanitation Automaton on turn two in a disguised creature, and never mind, we just drew... We just drew a planes. So let's go ahead and play the Market Watch Phantom. I think I prefer... Because we have three lands now, I think I prefer that over the Automaton. Just because we can make the Market Watch Phantom fly next turn. They played a Jaded Analyst. Ooh, another planes. Great. So now we go Inside Source, give our Market Watch Phantom flying. They have Jaded Analyst. I think the best way they can actually attack with the Analyst is if they play a Projector Inspector next turn. Oh, but we have a great follow if that's what they do. Please play Projector Inspector and attack me. Oh no, this has Vigilance. Uh, never mind. I, you don't need you don't you don't need to play Projector Inspector. That is a Fairy Snoop. I see. So they want to they want to hold down the fort here. Interesting. Now I do have the option to kill the Snoop. And I also have the ability to flip the case of the Gateway Express um, at the cost of an inside source. Is that worth it? I think so. I, I believe so. We're losing a 1 1, but now everything has plus 1, plus 0. That does seem pretty good to me. A lot of favorable trades moving forward because of this. All right, our opponent's just on mono, mono jade analyst and unscrew. Okay. So let's go ahead and play this face down to give Market Watch Phantom flying. Although this does match up really well against Sanitation Automaton. Oh, I can't give it flying <laughs> because of Kate. <laughs> That's funny. All right, well, let's just trade with the analyst, I guess. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> that actually ended up hurting us. Um, okay, I guess we just don't attack. Wow. Yeah, that's funny. All right, well, I guess we're on the Granite Witness plan. Double black. What can that be? I don't know, but I'm just going to face this up. Take action. It could be at the 4-2 flyer, I guess. And now we can attack with these. Yep, it is the 4-2 flyer. Yeah, I mean, our deck is just all creatures. We do have a couple of ways to go wide, which would go really well with the case of the Gateway Express. So Person of Interest, for example would be one that would be fantastic. Or just large creatures. Offender at large would be nice. Curious Inquiry. Okay. I mean, if you're going to put that on the Unscrupulous Agent, you have to have a removal spell too, right? There's just no way. Okay. Well, I'm okay with that too, for one. Okay, it's, but they got a little bit of value there with Drag the Canal, sure. I mean, they could have done that. Well, I guess I just don't block the 1-1 one -one if they attack with it. But by putting the Curious Inquiry, they do. But it does feel like you're not necessarily in a rush to cast this. But they do get a 2-2. They do get the Surveil. They do, I mean... Never mind. You you kind of want to cast this. It gives you a lot of value. It sets up your next few draws. They all kept both on top, I think. Which is really bad for us. We need a go-wide card quickly. Quick. 
Yeah, it is kind of funny that my Market Watch Phantoms get turned off because of Case of the Gateway Express. All right, so this is going to be an uphill battle. Our opponent kept two cards on top, drew both of them. Okay, deduce. I don't think I want to have them get free attacks in with Jaded Analyst, so we'll just block. Although we do have Aurelia. Dogwalker would be great. Auspicious Arrival. I mean, I'll... I'll... I'll cast it. Let's uh, draw the card now in case we find a two. We did. A little bit... I wanted to keep that land in hand. Although that would have given it flying. Maybe I should have held it in hand. Oh no! Conspiracy Unraveler! So they can collect evidence 10 and just cast cards from their hand. So I wonder what else they have. Our deck doesn't have a lot of removal. I don't think it has any removal. It has Lightning Helix. I don't think we have any big creature removal. Looks like it might be a removal spell. I don't know. Okay, murder on the detective. Sure. Do you have another spell? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. The yep. If they have another spell, they can play it for free. So that was a great, great turn. Barbed Servitor. Okay. Just two, two rares in one turn. All right, and now they're drawing cards. All right, so they have a... They're getting us with their blue-black control deck. Okay, Person of Interest is a great draw. Do we take six damage so they don't draw a card? Probably not, right? We can double block the Servitor. We need to draw like back-to-back -back person of interest or something to get back into this. That's not going to do. Oh, I should attack with person of interest. What am I doing? Oh, it would have died anyways. This is my, um, this is definitely like one of those, I'm so behind, I, it feels hopeless and I'm just ready, ready to die. But I should continue to fight. I should continue to fight. Okay, that's bad. The bad sign is when the Conspiracy Unraveler starts attacking. It's like, okay, well, they, now they know that they feel safe with whatever that they have at their hand. This is an out cold that they're probably casting on our two creatures. I don't think you have to wait till my upkeep to cast it. Just wait till my combat step. Yeah, I don't know that we drew enough action to be able to win this game. Oh, Lost in the Maze. Okay. What if I draw a Haste Creature? Yeah, I don't know how many haste creatures there are in this format, though, but probably better to just wait till my combat step. But I don't think it matters here. All right, they're at nine. How can we get in for the last few points of damage here? Lightning Helix? Three, six... I mean, we're dying to this flyer anyways. What if they just take it? Oh, it's not even enough. All right, you got me. Well, let's, let's see what they do. What are you up to, X-Factor? That is a really interesting long goodbye target. But I guess they're they're alive, so. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. GG's. They had a decent blue black control deck. I haven't run into too many of those. One and one. Let's rally back. Rally back. I want to draw my Aurelia. Can we draw the Aurelia? It's the reason why I'm playing red, so I feel like we um, <clears throat> deserve to draw it. Okay. We are on the play without a two. Um, I think being on the play, it's, it's okay. I think being on the draw, it's quite bad. So I think not a hand that I'm a fan of, but I do have something I can do next turn. Unscrupulous Agent, let's go ahead and discard this Plains. And then let's just face down Granite Witness. We can never hard cast it. And then we can just play the um, Museum Night Watch face up. Okay, Under City Sewers on turn three. That's good for us. Oh, they bin the Deduce. So another blue black control deck. And Extract Confession. Okay. And getting some, uh, those are some underwhelming draws here. We have a couple extra lands. We drew seven, seven lands? No, three. I guess our three draws in a row were three lands. Dogwalker, however, is quite nice. Let's see if they double block here. Okay, no. So we face down the Dogwalker. Next turn, or end of turn, we can uh, flip it up. And have a bunch of doggos. Forensic researcher. Okay. Hey, maybe this uh, blue black control strategy is worth exploring just because it's so underdrafted. It is the lowest win weight archetype, but our last opponent definitely had some success against us. It's interesting. I'm not attacking with the one ones anyways, so I don't know if I even flip it up. It might be better because I don't want them to block my dog walker with the unscrupulous agent. Yeah, and I don't have anything else to do with my mana. So I, I, it, it might actually be correct to wait on this one because they don't know what it is. Like I would much rather trade this for the face down card, right? So they do have two mana up, so that means I mean they actually have three mana up because forensic researcher is also available. Huh. Okay, just a chump block with unscrupulous agent. We're gonna run out inside source. Alright. I'm glad the unscrupulous agent is off the battlefield though. So now now my dog walker gets to actually get in. But this is a pretty good board that we have. Three mana, Fairy Snoop. This must be Fairy Snoop. Okay. They didn't want to... So, okay. They could have blocked this face down card. I only had... Well, I guess I had six mana up, so maybe blocking wasn't so good. But it feels to me like they had something there. But I guess we'll see. Oh, they Wait, are they playing that? No, they're... What is... Is, is this deja vu? What's happening? We're just playing against back-to-back blue-black control decks with Conspiracy Unraveler? What is going on? What is going on? Oh, man. Um... I want to play the person of interest this turn. Let's just attack with everything. They're at 14. I mean, this is just kind of our best shot. Yep. Let's keep our dog walker alive. And then let's just play person of interest. That dies and makes another token. All right, here we, that's, we're all in. We're just going super wide. They have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana worth of spells in their graveyard. They can collect evidence, but look, if the... <laughs> what? 
Vein Ripper? And Conspiracy Unraveler. Just, just blue black mythics over there. I don't know. I mean, I just. This is. Do I even. Is this even a profitable attack? I just have no idea. They drain me for six. One mana? You have a one mana spell? Toxin analysis to gain life? Oh my gosh. Oh no. Wow. How I I I mean this is just tradition at this point going one and two in these drafts. Just here we're just trying to play some reasonable magic, curving out. You just gotta play a vein ripper on us and give it lifelink. Oh man. Okay. This is fair. This is fair. Alright, we're dead. Two flyers. Two six power flyers. I mean, this is a reason to go blue black control, I guess. Draft around that. Oh no, let's not. The slide is happening. Let's not become percentage gamers here. Come on. Curve out. Curve out. Beat people down. But I feel like my... just By not having um, the plus two plus one spell or fuss bother or anything like that, just it feels so much worse. You just don't have that game-breaking card. Once you play all the creatures. I do have Aurelia though. But she is um, really good at playing hide and seek. And she has not shown her face. Like I want to at least see her in my hand. Even if I don't cast it. Just show me that you're around. All right, two drop, three drop. If we draw a red source, we can play Detective and the Phantom. They got the face down card. Let's go ahead and attack with both. I think I'm just going to play both, both creatures here. Yeah. No, this is, this is still really good. We have double... Th I mean, these are two mana three threes now, right? We have four creatures in play. We're on the play. Even if they play... A Loxodon or a 4 4. We're still not looking too bad. I suppose I don't want to attack with the Phantom. So I'll attack like this. This looks a little bit weird because this is a, a creature that turns into a creature. Yeah. So let's go ahead and cast Auspicious Arrival there and flip this up. And now they have no board. And we still have the same number of creatures with a clue. So liking where we're at. Would really love a red source. V2 Gazi Inspector. They, wait, they chose not to collect evidence. That's something to be mindful of. You don't want a 2-4 on this board? Interesting. I think it's too much of a risk to crack the clue for a red source when I can just play the, another face down card that I'm going to choose to do this. Like if I whiff on this clue, then that's pretty bad when I can play this face down card. And if I do draw a red source next turn naturally, it's going to be so good that I have this face down. So, I mean, given that they didn't um, collect evidence last turn, I feel like they're getting ready to collect evidence this turn. Maybe bite down on crime? No? All right. 
Red source. Red source. No. Red source. Oh my goodness. Um All right. Well, I think we're on send in the clowns mode. They can double block a 2-2 two -two and kill it. But if they do, they go down to 2. Okay, yeah. They're on preserve their life total mode, which is totally fine. And at least we drew the Granite Witness, so we can use that to tap down a blocker. Hopefully they also don't play a ridiculous busted rare of their own. Okay. Green, white, black, red. We have an Offender at large face down and a Granite, the Tapper. The Tapper deals three damage in the air. The Inspector has reach, but I can tap that down. Oh, oh Red Man, is this Lightning Helix? I could totally imagine our opponent splashing for Lightning Helix. It looks like they're going to crack a clue, which is always a good sign, because that means they don't have the immediate answers in hand. Or they don't have a way to use all their mana this turn. That's what that means. Okay! We got we. Why 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 is it like this every time? Why do we always start out one and two, and then try to make some kind of a rally? Let's just start out strong. Let's start out strong. Okay. Well, this hand has mountain planes, two drop inside source, double face down cards, and a shock. Or did I already say shock? But. I feel like you have to keep this hand on the play, but of course, if I don't draw land number three, this is just game over, more or less. If I draw land number three, then I have a real game that I can play. But I... okay, all right, we 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 drew we drew a land. Um, I'm gonna play inside source. Give my Market Watch Phantom flying. If I didn't draw a land, I would have attacked and then finished off the Detective with the Shock, probably. But it's far too risky to block this Detective with all this open mana. They could have Shock, Galvanize, any other way to kill all my creatures. Um, but honestly, if they attack me, I'm kind of happy. I was on the play, and I'm the Boros player. I mean, what are they going to do here? Play a, a face down card? What I would love is if they played like a projector inspector and then for us to draw a land because then we can actually use the shock without having to pay for ward two and then play another threat like this offender at large or the granite witness that we have in hand. I mean, for us, drawing another land would just be great regardless because if they even if they try to keep the detective back for defense... We can still have, it. if our opponent chooses to block one of our 2-2s, two we can still shock it, right? They played Innocent Bystander. And there is Aurelia. There is Aurelia. All right, so... I don't think we have great attacks elsewhere. I suppose... Yeah, because they can block my detective with their detective and then inside... So well... No, I guess Inside Source can still get in. And I want my Market Watch Phantom to fly. And because I didn't draw land number four, I'm just going to face down Granite Witness because I actually have a chance of flipping that up next turn. And so I'm going to face down that, give my Phantom flying, attack with everything. I guess if I attack with everything, then my Detective trades with the Bystander. That's not a favorable trade. So never mind. I'm just going to get in for two in the air. It looks like it's a shock, though. No, it's not. All right. We have the Aurelia, but we did miss land drop number four. Let's start peeling some lands. We're not playing 16 lands, even though we're aggro. Okay. Our right, Gadget Technician is a nice shock target. If we need to, right? Still didn't find a land. We are simply on the um, get them with Market Watch Phantom plan. 
Not too concerned about the technician just yet, but I think I probably still just want to use shock here just to utilize my whatever limited mana I have access to. But I'll wait. If they decide to put Curious Inquiry on their Thopter, then I might want to use my shock on that instead. So I'm just keeping it up and will likely use it end of turn to kill the best target. All right, our opponent played a face down card. Do they have land number five? No land number five. Okay, that's good for us. Interesting. Reckless Detective attacking. I did not expect... I'm not going to lie. I did not... I guess they're really digging for a land here. So the question for us is do we block in a way to kill it? I think the answer is yes. Detective is quite nice. I mean, I guess I can just block with the consultant and then shock it. Alternatively, I can block with detective token plus season consultant. And if they have a shock, I can still shock it back to finish it off. But I also want to attack for a bunch. But I mean, the thing is, we're stuck on lands. All right, let's kill the detective. This just seems like too good of a trade to pass up on. I suppose they could have felonious rage. Okay. I mean, that still just kills the consultant. So it's not... I mean, they get a 2-2, sure. But... Let's go ahead and kill Gadget Technician. We drew a land. We drew a land. I can flip the Granite Witness up and start attacking, but I think I'm just going to play a face down card here instead. Just keep adding to the board. And I'm just going to attack with the Market Watch Phantom because I do have Aurelia. I got to read this again. When it attacks with, when a player attacks with five or more creatures, it deals three damage to each of your opponents and I gain three life. Okay. That seems pretty good. Just going to say. Above average. I mean, next turn, do I just jam? I mean, obviously, it depends on what they play, but right now, their board is just all two power creatures, so we can end up with the situation where I play Aurelia, draw a card. Okay, well, not, not with this much mana up. When our opponent has this much mana up, I don't... I'm not that interested. Although, oof, this face down card is kind of scaring me. The face down card is scaring me. Do I tap it? It's still, uh, no. All right. Still feels like a situation where I just keep wanting, keep wanting to play more creatures. But with four mana up and them saying go. We'll see what this is. This could be a Granite Witness of their own. Like, flip up Granite Witness, tap down the Phantom, and then Escape Tunnel. Okay, it is. It is. Huh. You want to do this trade? I will do that trade. Yep. I am happy trading my 2-mana two 2-2 two two for your 4-mana 3-2 Flying Vigilance. That is a trade I will accept. But they're on the back foot. I get it. They want to keep their life total high. <laughs> Look at her face down cards. Just, our, our, yeah, our board is extremely offensive. Our hand is also offensive. Just a lot of offense. Okay. This doesn't seem like the turn to play Aurelia. They have counter magic up. I kind of want to wait. And I have a lot of stuff I can flip up as well. I 
I'm wondering if the answer is just flip over my granite witness and just start going to town. Yeah, let's do that. Play it nice and slow. And I kind of want to run this into a counter if they have one. Of course, I could have played the face down card first, but this clears the way for Aurelia. Okay. We have now cleared the way for Aurelia. They, they suspected their bystander. Okay. I will take two damage. All right, now you can play your big thing, right? Nope. Oh, well, they could certainly have another reasonable doubt. Let's put you to the test. Okay. So we won't be gaining as much value here with the Aurelia, but we've if this works, there they basically have a completely empty board. Just kidding, they have a dog walker. But this is still a very, very, very favorable board for us. And we can still just jam Aurelia next turn. Hopefully we can find land number seven to play around Reasonable Doubt. If I have nothing, I'm just going to play this anyways. But basically what I'm trying to do in this spot is because I feel pretty ahead on board, I'm playing in a way where I... I play around a counter spell if I can afford to instead of just playing my card, right? That's kind of where I'm at. Well, they certainly don't want to attack with all three because then they'll just die. And now we just play Aurelia, right? All right. Well, we can't deal three damage to them, but we can definitely draw a card here. And meddling youths might trade with the offender at large. Ooh, good thing we kept the planes up because we had the mountain in hand. That allows us to play the seasoned consultant. And now we have two lethal flyers and we're at 18 life. So the way that we lose now, perhaps if they're splashing for mind control or if they have a sweeper. Okay, dramatic accusation on the Granite Witness. and uh, On the Aurelia and Granite Witness gets it done. All right, clawing back. 252. Traditional 1-2 into the 3-2. and two. Let's try to rack up a few more. Let's try to rack up a few more. I did really want to get the um, Aurelia into attack with everything. But with those, with all the offenders at large, I also just want to spend all my mana to flip those over too. So, okay. This is we predicted four wins, so this will be the game that decides that. Oh, I'm on the play. I have three mountains with an offender at large. I have a season consultant, a case of the Gateway Express, and Aurelia, but I can't cast the Aurelia. I have nine white sources in my deck. I'm keeping. We we live by the Aurelia or we die by the Aurelia. Why don't we just draw planes right away? Come on, deck. Oh, oh, no, we didn't draw planes. We drew a dog walker. Come on, deck. Opponents playing green, white. They had a two drop. Oh, that's a lightning helix. Come on, deck. 
We did not. We failed to draw a land in any of our two draw steps. They're leading with Rubble Belt Maverick, milling two cards. Oh, come on, no. Oh, this is brutal. We didn't draw land number four. We drew a Season Consultant. I played the Offender at Large instead of making two creatures with the Dog Walker. All right, our opponent just played a turn four, hide in plain sight. And uh, th this might be it. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Just hate to go out this way. That's all I'm going to say. It's another mountain. And don't have an attack. Oh, this is brutal. I mean, if we draw planes, if we draw planes, we can maybe get back into this, but yeah, it was a little, was it, was it greedy? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, what, what can it be? Show me what you got. Man, they needed to flip that over on the as the other creature, but What's the other morph? Just a land maybe? Oh, it was a topiary panther. Okay. Oh, chalk outline. Chalk outline is nice with the rubble belt maverick. We cannot cast a single card in our hand. That is wild. We drew another white card, four mountains in play. It's the risk you take sometimes. They're attacking me with the automaton, interesting. Oh, they get to exile something with the Griff Knot Tracker. And then they can make a 2 2 and they get a clue. That's cool. I have, yeah, that's, you know, honestly, cards like Griffin Tracker and Rubble Boat Maverick might be better ways to get value out of Chalk Outline than just play and collect evidence, which is what I tried to do in one of my previous decks. Still not a land, and that's going to do it here, sadly. Glint Weaver, sure. Yeah, I mean, if we drew lands, who knows? May have been close, but now it's just not close at all. I don't even... We're going to drop planes now. Nope. Well... The nice thing here is to know that it's not just you that doesn't draw the land that you need. It's, you're not alone. It happens to everyone. It happens to me. It happens to you. It happens to John Finkel. It happens to Kai. It happens to everyone. Now, should I have mulliganed that hand? Possibly. Right? I had three mountains with a face-down card on the play with the best card in my deck in my hand and several turns to try to find a white source, right? Because I had three lands still, and you st I still have a good number of face-down creatures that I can draw into. So I felt like I had enough time to be able to either find face-down cards to play while I wait for the white source, or just naturally draw the planes. But unfortunately, we were unable to do that, and we ended up with just a 3-3 three and three record this time around, which is a little bit sad. A little bit sad. We lost to a couple of blue-black control decks that had that giant 7-mana 6-6 six, six flyer. And then the other deck also had a Vein Ripper. And then this one we kind of lost to ourselves uh, because we kept a hand with no planes. But all in all, like I said, this deck wasn't spectacular by any means. I think if we had an on-the-job, it would be a lot better. But this is what a lot of... To be honest, I mean, this is just what a lot of red white decks that win five matches kind of looks like you just have a good curve we have some some interaction 
And uh, we even had an Aurelia here. And so this just looks kind of like your standard run-of-the-mill red-white deck that probably wins, you know, 60% of its games or something like that, just because it's red-white. But unfortunately, we were not able to get there. Can't get there every time. So we have fallen backwards this time. Uh, we started out around 250, and we're now 301. So... We are not making forward progress. We're, we're, we're making backward progress. But hopefully we can turn this around and continue on our journey to rank one. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. I'll catch you next time.